are talking Curse of the Dragon, also known as Jabberwock. This is directed by uh, Stephen R. Monroe, who directed the remake of I Spit on Your Grave, and stars Mo Pennycock from Battlestar Galactica fame. And this is a 2011 made-for-TV kind of fantasy movie about, well, the aforementioned Jabberwock, obviously based off the uh, poem by Lewis Carroll. So this is a kind of uh, medieval-style fantasy movie, um, reasonably light on the fantasy elements outside of the actual kind of Jabberwock itself. It tells the story of this kind of small cut-off village, and uh, not far away from this village, there's there's like a cave system, and a storm kind of you know, has some lightning and that hits these kind of eggs and out pops this kind of infant Jabberwock, but it's not long before it's kind of fully grown and ends up kind of attacking this village and it's up to this inhabitants of this village uh, to try and defend themselves. So what will happen? You will have to watch the movie and find out. So it's a low budget movie and it's not been particularly kind of well reviewed, but I think um, it's not as bad maybe as some reviews would have you believe. Uh, let's talk about what I think works in this movie's favour. And we, again, we have to bear in mind it's a 2011 film and it is a low budget made for TV movie. So within those kind of expectations, why do I think this movie is slightly underrated? Slightly underrated. I'm not saying this is a masterpiece. Okay, so I quite like the fact that this movie is quite small on scale. This is not some kind of world event. It's effectively a village versus a dragon. And that's it. Doesn't have any kind of external kind of factors other than that. So it's relatively localized. But I actually kind of quite liked it because it's not it's not overextending itself into, you know, a, a kind of a world defining kind of story. It is simply a village defending themselves against a large predator. And we've seen this kind of story play out here with other kind of like you know beasts and things like that. So I actually could have quite liked the fact that this movie is relatively kind of small in scale. And I also quite like the fact that this movie, it's not overdone on the kind of the fantasy elements. It's kind of like relatively, um, you know, fantasy free, really, outside of the fact that there's a dragon. But other than that, there's no kind of wizards. There's nothing like that. There's no kind of like fantasy kind of knights or anything. It's actually relatively, um, oh, maybe not grounded exactly, but it's, 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 it's more kind of like uh, realistic than a lot of fantasy films in that respect, in, in, in the fact that it's not super kind of like um, fantastically out there. And I, I kind of quite like the more sort of um, down to earth kind of style that this movie kind of portrays. In actual fact, they actually mentioned the Romans a few times. So. This is obviously taking place kind of like in the Dark Ages, obviously after the kind of the Roman Empire in this kind of like undefined uh, fantasy kind of landscape. And speaking of the landscape, I think the location shooting is pretty good here. Now I have seen this kind of location, this kind of uh, this cliff area, actually in other fantasy movies. So it's obviously a popular location to shoot these kind of fantasy um, low budget movies. And it's there's kind of like some kind of like medieval, probably a, a, an already existing um, some type of medieval looking type uh, construction there. But I gotta say, I thought it looked reasonable. Again, we have to bear in mind it's a low budget affair. But I thought the location shooting here was fairly good, and I thought it was it was quite, you know, uh, acceptable for that kind of like you know, fantasy kind of movie aesthetic that you would expect with kind of like, you know, we've got a few kind of wide shots of kind of showing you this kind of village and this and its architecture. There's quite a lot of extras running around all in kind of like medieval style kind of like uh, costumes and things like that. There's some, some great natural environment. There's kind of this cliff face and things. So I quite enjoyed it. I quite thought, I thought the actual kind of the world, so to speak, that this movie inhabits was quite good. And I also quite like the fact that they kind of explain that they're kind of somewhat cut off. And they we have one guy who rides off to go and get help and ultimately gets killed by the Jabberwock. So it kind of, within the context of the story, I think it kind of like, it's believable that this little village, this little, you know, out of the way village is more or less kind of cut off and is up to its own devices. And it's not flush with able fighters. There is kind of like um, 
probably like 10, 10 or less able men in the village that are able to kind of like stand, you know, stand up to this thing. And their numbers are obviously decreasing when this Jabberwock is kind of killing them. Uh, again, so it has that element of, I don't want to say realism exactly, but it's kind of like, I think the stakes are kind of quite well judged, if that makes sense. And it's kind of like thinking, okay, for the scale of this movie is trying to be, I, I actually kind of buy into this world, so to speak. So that was that was all pretty good. Uh, one other thing I, I kind of liked about this movie as well is the interactions between our villagers. Now, normally with a film like this, you'll have a human bad guy who is there to kind of like pad out the runtime because the you know they don't want to spend money on having a kind of a, a VFX heavy creature like a dragon on screen all that often. So they pad out the runtime with a human bad guy. We don't have it here. We don't even really have any human antagonists. So there's a couple of disagreements within the village. And there's one guy who you think is going to be a problem. But ultimately they all end up being kind of team players that work together. And I kind of like that. So we have not all the same opinion. But then at the end of the day these characters end up working together for the greater good of the village. And there's not really any kind of real problems with any kind of one in the village in particular which again i thought it was a um you know a, a good way of portraying this kind of like this village kind of mentality uh, and how these kind of characters don't all get on but they kind of put their differences aside just get on with the the uh, the business of trying to kind of defeat this kind of um this, this uh uh dragon ultimately i've seen some criticism of the acting i have to say again it's not trying to be set in, in, in like medieval kind of Britain or anything like that. It's a fantasy kind of landscape. So it's a nondescript, uh, you know, fantasy based on kind of European medieval culture. So people are having, you know, people have got their American accents and stuff. But I think it's fine. I mean, okay, it's certainly not going to be Oscar winning uh, acting at any point. But I think it's fine for this kind of like I mean, movie. I mean, let's be honest. A lot of the kind of the fantasy and sword and sorcery genre movies and, and TV shows, maybe with the exception of like Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings, they're not known for, you know, fabulous acting, let's be honest. But I think the, the, the level of acting is fine. There are some comedic moments and we do have a kind of a comedy uh, character, but he's not overplayed. I actually think his character... Um, is a genuinely interesting one, to be honest with you, because he is a bit of a coward, but he, you know, he, he's not irredeemable and things like that. And also the comedy isn't too bad, he's just genuinely afraid. So again, I think there's some subtlety um, in this kind of movie to a certain degree. The actual Lewis Carroll poem is actually integrated into the story as a kind of an old fable um, that these kind of characters reference in, in regards to uh, try to kind of talk about the origins of this kind of creature. So the, the Carol, uh, so the Lewis Carroll poem uh, exists within this kind of universe as some type of kind of ancient poem, which makes you think, hmm, is this going to be some type of futuristic uh, uh, society or where the, you know humanity is? Kind of, it's never mentioned, but uh, that, that there is that uh, little thing in there if, if you want to think of it like that. Uh, and I also quite like these guys fail quite a lot of the time. There's there's quite a few attempts at trying to take out this Jabberwock that fail. So it does seem like a struggle. So they, we do feel like we have stakes. And it does feel like there is a um, an uphill fight for these guys. So to me, I, I think this movie has some positive points. That I think it's just overlooked because it's a made for TV, um, you know, relatively kind of simple story. Uh, with CGI monsters. But let's now transition to what doesn't work and let's talk about CGI monsters. I mean, the, the, the dragon in this was never going to be great. It was it. I mean, it's, it's a made-for-TV sci-fi movie uh, with a computer-generated um, monster from 2011 that doesn't look good, uh, I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm mean, like, I guess, they, again, they haven't made it too huge, so it doesn't seem like it's too unbeatable it's a relatively i mean it's probably the size of like an elephant um so it's it's big but it's not you know unwieldily big so if that makes sense but, but but the graphics of it the animation yeah it's kind of what you expect i think the worst thing about the kind of the vfx are actually when we are trying to have uh scenes where our villagers are fighting it with swords 
Because it really just does look like they're kind of slashing through the air, really, to be honest. Um, so when we actually have our scenes with our Jabberwock, it, it's not the best. I mean, I am relatively forgiving of the VFX side of stuff because I understand these movies do not have the budget. But obviously, I, it's, it has to be said that the, the VFX, the CGI kind of creature, there's one or two shots where I think it looks okay, but for the most part, it's... It's not the best, it, it, let's just, just say that. Um, some of the more modern style kind of dialogue, again, for purists who want a genuine medieval kind of feel to that uh, aesthetic, it's not trying to be a, no, a realistic kind of depiction of medieval culture. It is kind of a, a, a kind of fantasy movie, and therefore we have more kind of modern uh, kind of personalities and dialogue and things like that. Again, I, with fantasy movies, I feel you can more or less set your own rules because it's fantasy at the end of the day. So I, again, I don't mind it so much. Um, I don't think it's necessarily meant to be taking place on Earth, exactly. But yeah, it has to be said that some of the dialogue is a little bit on the kind of like the, a um, little bit cheaty side from it from time to time. Uh, so they're, they're, they're kind of, there is that. I think even though I quite liked it, 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 it relatively is a, a kind of a small scale story that isn't a particularly in-depth narrative. Um, it is just a kind of basically villagers fighting off a, a beastie and that is kind of it. Um, I think it suits the story well, but some people, you, you may think, oh, do you know what, there, there could have been a little bit more um, to this story. The one thing I would say in regards to the kind of like the script side of stuff, is I didn't really feel like we got a huge amount of characterization from our primary kind of protagonist. Um, this guy who is this kind of like, it's essentially uh, the, the less combat orientated out of these kind of two brothers who was our main character. You know, we don't get a huge amount, I don't really feel we, we especially kind of got to know him. Uh, you'll recognize him as I say from uh, Battlestar Galactica. But he's a relatively kind of like blank slate in regards to character development so, so there is that i mean this really wants to kind of get on with the story it's not like trying to tell necessarily a huge lord of the rings kind of style epic it's very much a, a short truncated in regards to really any type of character development you get a little bit here and there and as i say i like some of the touches that were done uh in regards to some of the um the setups between the characters but actual kind of character development is a little bit lacking if we're being honest and when it comes down to it our final confrontation with the Jabberwock is a little bit it's a little bit ends up being a little easier than I would have uh, you would have led to have been believed so we have quite a lot of you know encounters with this Jabberwocky and it's quite hard to kill until the end where it seems particularly easy I mean I guess that's that could have just been happenstance and it could have the guy could have got a lucky shot in but it seems He's, the Jabberwock is defeated without much tassel. Think, well, why couldn't that have been done earlier on? You know. Uh, so I think the ending could have been a little bit more impactful. But overall, I think this is a fine, uh, low-budget B-movie fantasy film. I think it doesn't quite deserve some of the kind of the low scores that it has. I actually think it it's a reasonable film. Whilst it doesn't excel, uh, I wouldn't say. I think it's. Uh, it's an okay fantasy film. I'll give this one a 5 out of 10. Have you seen it? Please do let me know what your thoughts are and I shall look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.